I'm going to allow for closing statements, but if it's under a minute, that's the very best, because I think we've all been here a long time. And I want to thank all the candidates, because because I'm really, I'm really impressed, and I love seeing so many people want to improve the Richmond Public Schools, and all the people that hung out for this long. So that's very promising, and it me a lot of hope, and I also have two kids in Richmond Public Schools. So I'm very, very happy, and I look forward to this election. Anyway, so under a minute, um, closing, and we'll just start with um, Churchill and just weave around. Well, first of all, thank all of you who so patiently waited around to hear this entire discussion. Um, and we hope that you will continue to be engaged with the schools, wrap your arms around the schools, share your ideas with us, and help us to make Richmond Public Schools world class. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, my, my three goals as a school board member are financial efficiency, which I talked a lot about, um, school options, that includes using models that work, um, charters, lab schools, IB, um, a career and technical school. We need to retain our families, we need to better educate our children, and we need to encourage a love of learning. And lastly, my, my, my last goal is being accountable. We need to make sure that, that we are addressing the problems in the school system, that we acknowledge them, and that we're doing what we can um, for the sake of the children. Hello again. My name is Mamie Taylor, of course, I just wanted to put that fresh in your mind. Today is my birthday. <laughs> with my community and everything that it encompasses, and there's no place that I would be other than tonight, and my family understands. So I just wanted to re-emphasize that it's going to take a village to raise a child, and that's why my platform sits on families and administrators, communities, teachers, and students all working together. Enough of letting our leaders control the decisions that impact our lives. It's time for us to get involved and make a difference and take responsibility that equally belongs to all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we face, as we go into this school year, a budget situation that we will be at least $10 million in deficit. And so we find ourselves at a place where we must deal with the financial realities of our school district as we try very hard to increase the rigor of our instruction. This morning I was with uh, the Federal Department of Education, the Virginia Department of Education in one of our schools. And it was really heartening to hear them say how encouraged they are that they are bringing people from other parts of the state and other parts of the country to see how we are implementing strategies in the Richmond Public Schools to deal with the academic challenges that we face. And so I'm particularly proud of the work that we're doing. It's been a decade labor of love and educating our children. Uh, but it is not in any way over and done with. We must continue to work on it. We must continue to strive. And my commitment to you is to make funding education in the city of Richmond an absolute priority. And I just want to mention that last year, we implemented uh, night football and basketball for boys and girls. So we're well on the way to rebuilding our athletic program. I am particularly proud of that because I'm a proud athlete from the Richmond Public Schools and I know what it meant to us. And there are so many kids that are beaming about what we're doing now as we just begin to break ground on a substantial athletic program. So I want to thank you for coming out this evening. I really appreciate your commitment to staying with us and listening to this and uh, the entire uh, political process. Thank you very much. Thank you all as well for staying with us this long. I know it's past many of our bedtime. 
Um, but I, I really do appreciate you all being here with us. I, I just would like to say that um, as, as we move forward and selecting our candidates to represent the school board in the next four years, it is really your duty and your responsibility to hold us accountable. I am very honored to be running unopposed, and I do not take that lightly. I think it's truly a blessing that it has been formulated that way. Um, and as I stated earlier, this is a call of my life. It is truly a ministry. And I am going to use the skills and abilities that I have to make sure that the school system that is good at this moment moves to be a greater school system for all of our children implementing equality and excellence. If you all are interested in having a conversation with me over coffee or dinner, my cell number is 687-6743. You can reach me. I am um, working on uh, putting together a school board task force, a task force that holds us directly accountable, as well as a parent report card and a daycare in one of the high schools for our employees. again and, and thank you all for being here um, this evening. I am Alfred T. Carter and I get candidate for the 8th District School Board seat. The 8th um, District is a very unique district. And a lot of the children in my district have many challenges, most of which I have witnessed firsthand. I'm running for the 8th District School Board seat is because I want to see change in our neighborhoods. I want our children to be able to go to school in a safe environment and to be able to learn as much as they can possibly learn while they're there. But again, we, we do, we face a lot of challenges in our neighborhood. Um, I often you know, tell the story of how a lot of what our children see happens inside of a yellow tape, because that yellow tape all too often is in our neighborhoods. And so, again, I want to do what's best for them. I want to make sure that Richmond Public Schools retain quality teachers. I want to ensure that we look under every rock, every nook, every cranny to find the budget dollars for our schools. This is a very critical election. And it's not an election that should be a popularity contest. But you should want the person who you elect to be someone who has the knowledge, the skills, the ability, the experience, and the competence to get the job done. Thank you. And I appreciate your support. Thank you for being here this evening. I'd like to give a thank you to everybody here this evening. We appreciate you coming and taking the time to listen. But I especially want to thank those four young ladies back there. <laughs> they are students at George Smith High School, and they are the reason why I do what I do. Um, it's going to take teamwork. It's going to take teamwork. We're going to have to uh, have an exciting vision for Richard Public Schools. We've all got to be energized. We've got to be engaged. We've got to care. Um, basically, we're going to have to start these children on solid educational foundations. Starts in the homes, happens in the communities, and it's going to happen in the schools. Uh, thanks again, everybody, for being here tonight. Uh, my, name, uh, my name is Glenn Sturdivant, uh, running for school board in the first district. Uh, like I said to you at the beginning, I want to make sure uh, our kids can go K through 12 and go to and get a great education at Richmond Public Schools. Uh, we've got to get back to fundamentals on school board and in central office and in the schools of having the very best and the very brightest teachers and principals. Make sure that we are wise stewards of the public money and that we're spending that money in the classrooms uh, and that we're not unwisely spending it uh, at central office and that we are working to bridge the gap in these middle schools by getting universities involved and, and working on new ideas and creative ideas to really make this happen and that we have a focus in the school system of getting kids either college bound or career ready. Thanks very much. Thank you all for sticking around. Trent Park running in the first district. 
Uh, nobody has a more vested interest in this race than I do. With three kids in the schools already, first, second, and fourth grades. Uh, with the child in fourth grade, obviously middle schools are really on um, my wife and my mind. My wife is a teacher, Riverside. Uh, she's also the PTA treasurer at Mary Monford, so we're both very involved in the schools. Um, this race is boiling down to a difference between big ideas versus good ideas. And um, Glenn didn't have much time to talk about his big idea tonight, but um, I think if we focus on good ideas, uh, the things that are good for Albert Hill and good for the other uh, schools in the first district are also good for uh, schools throughout the city. And I hope that uh, I'll have you all support uh, come November 6th. Thank you very much. Thank you again. My name is Daisy Weaver. Um, thank you all for sticking around. I am very encouraged listening to all of the thoughtful responses from all of the candidates tonight that you will end up with the school board um, who is thoughtful, who is forward thinking, um, looking for, forward looking, and will come up with the answers to many of our problems. Richmond, of course, does not have any challenges that are different from a lot of urban areas. But I think one of the good things about Richmond is because of the size of, of our system and what we have to work with, that we have the opportunity to put in place um, a model that can be used by larger urban systems, that we can be creative, and, and in fact, we must be creative, and that we will set a pace that will serve as a model that can't, probably won't happen in some of the larger urban settings. And so I think um, that's something we really need to consider as we move forward. But thank you all. I'd like to thank, say thank you again, just like everyone else, for your support and coming out tonight. But I'd like to say that leaders are not born, they are made. So let's build our children for the future. And I'd like to say to each of you, if you're in the second district, if you want it done right, vote for Mariah White. <laughs> I just want to thank everybody for coming out, and um, I am hopeful to have the honor of serving the 2nd District another four years. Um, I just want to say that regardless of the outcome, I'm committed to Richmond Public Schools and staying involved. And if any of you here are currently involved, thank you. If you're not, please get involved in a school. Even if it's an hour a week um, mentoring a child, it makes a huge difference. So thank you again for coming out and stay involved. Uh, thank you. Let me just walk by. Sorry, bathroom break. <laughs> uh, thank you. My name is Jeff Warren again, and I'm running for the school board in the third district. Um, to me, it boils down to, uh, you know, realizing, recognizing, and and really doing something about the fact that that our competitors are no longer in Chesterfield and Henrico. Uh, we're competing against Atlanta and Charlotte and Beijing. Uh, in this global economy, and global world. And so we've got to get this right now um, and, and get our students prepared to compete and compete at the highest levels. Uh, it starts with increasing accountability. We've got to fix the middle schools and we have got to radically retool our career and technical education if, if we're going to get this right and build excellence in our public schools now. Thank you. I'm Dr. Norma Bernard Kidd, representing the third. Just wanted to quickly say that we need to invest in our kids to the same extent that the surrounding counties do. 35 to 42 percent is the percentage that the surrounding counties devote and invest in their children. And our city is investing about half of that. In order to have the kind of things that we need for them. For instance, instead of just having a volunteer supply drive that Ms. Mohammed has been in charge of, we need to have supplies for the teachers and the kids built into our budget because over 80% of them are on a free and reduced lunch. We need to make sure that our preschool is expanded to the point that every child who needs to benefit from that has that opportunity and not just a small percentage of them. We need to screen our kids as soon as they come into our system to see if they learn best with their eyes or their ears or with their hands and then make sure that they learn that way rather than waiting until they fail and let, later blame them as handicapped and having them feel awful about we need to make sure that we stop socially promoting our kids who are not reading at grade level because that just makes them further and further behind. We need to stop relying on out-of-school suspension, which is only related to dropping out, and actually teach kids how to control themselves and develop other skills of calming themselves down. Um, we also need to make sure that all of our 
schools are especially schools focused on different parts of the economy because they're all going to need to work. And in order to uh, do that, we need to also look at building in a middle school at our career and technical school and have that be a comprehensive high school because all the different schools should be focused on different parts of the job market. Uh, finally, I think we also need to expand Brown into a totally Ivy school because there's clearly been a demand for it for years. I was the one that got it started in the city years ago and it hasn't uh, expanded to reach the demand yet. And also, um, we need to make sure that we at a middle school, at a community high school, because there's been demand for that. There's space in the building, and we should take advantage of it. Thank you. Again, it's Vanessa Womack Easter, and that's the name that will be on the ballot in the 4th District. <laughs> As a business educator and um, instructor, I recognize that our students today are going to be our leaders and our citizens of tomorrow. And I have to be committed to make an impact to help them be successful. And that's why I'm doing this. So I thank you all for sticking in with us tonight. And I applaud all my colleagues here because I think you're all fabulous. And I know that you will be a great contribution to improving the lives of our children and our students in the city of Richmond. Thank you so much. I'm Rich Savage, and I'm the last guy, uh, so there's no pressure to be brief here. But just, just to, <laughs> so here's here's the the two things I want to leave you with. First of all, a lot of the issues we talked tonight about, you know, Norrell, uh, the rezoning, uh, even the Blackwell principle, it, it all comes down to improving information and communication, and that's the one thing that we're going to have to do when we move forward uh, in whatever decisions we do. Uh, because the public, a lot of times, and the schools don't do themselves, a, 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 they do themselves a disservice with, you know, the miscommunications and people not getting access to accurate information. I mean, we've had the SAT scores that were messed up, the amount of IV diplomas we get awarded, you know, so we have to get everybody on the same page. Second of all, I want to see us there's a lot of great ideas and a, and a lot of great minds uh, sitting here, but we have to, whatever we do, is develop a long-term strategy because we got to get off this, we all want efficiencies in the spring, and then we all have to work and figure out why we have deficiencies in the fall. So we have to develop a way where we're not constantly battling so we can have a long-term growth so we can have some stability because that goes a long way with education, teachers, and everything else when we have stable footing that we can work on. So those are the couple of things I want to uh, leave you with. And uh, I want you all to have a good evening and a safe drive home. Thank you. Again, again, please. Thank you all so much for this great. Can we get a big hand for Kirsten Gray, who did a wonderful job with that model? Thank you all so much. Um, as you see, we've been um, filming this, and it will be on the internet in uh, fairly short order, because I'm sure you're all going to want to watch it again. Um, <laughs> thank you all again very much. Uh, again, thank you to BCU and everyone else. Take care.